If you've never been in my situation, you can't understand the decisions that led me here. Decisions that haunt every waking moment and fuel every nightmare. It began with a small crack in the universe, an asteroid, harmless and unassuming, drifting into our sector. Protocol dictated that we examine it, harvest it. Curiosity, after all, is the lifeblood of our mission. We should have left it alone. The space station, Elysium, was a marvel of human ingenuity, orbiting a distant planet in the Omega-6 system, designed to house settlers in hypersleep for extended missions. It was a sanctuary in the void, a self-contained world. But even the most advanced technology couldn't save us from what lay dormant inside that rock. I was the commander, responsible for every soul aboard. It was my duty to ensure their safety, my burden to bear their lives. The first sign of trouble came from the lab. Dr. Henley, our lead scientist, reported strange readings, something about alien spores. They were excited buzzing with the thrill of discovery. I should have listened to my instincts, should have ordered the quarantine immediately. But instead, I allowed the research to continue. That night, the first screams echoed through the corridors. I rushed to the lab, my heart pounding, fear twisting my gut. The sight that greeted me was the stuff of nightmares. Dr. Henley lay on the floor, convulsing, his body racked with spasms as the pathogen took hold. His skin was mottled with dark, pulsating veins, eyes wild with terror and pain. And then he stopped moving. The others tried to help him, tried to revive him. But Henley wasn't dead. Not really. He rose with a guttural snarl, eyes now void of any humanity. He attacked ripping into the closest crew member with a ferocity that sent blood spraying across the sterile white walls. Chaos erupted, orders shouted, weapons drawn, none of it mattered. The infection spread like wildfire, containment failed. We sealed off sections, barricaded ourselves in the control room, but it was already too late. The pathogen moved faster than we could react, turning friend into foe, crewmate into monster, each scream that echoed through the halls was a testament to our failure, each howl a reminder of our doom. I stood at the command console, eyes fixed on the screens, watching as the red indicators spread across the station map. My mind raced, desperately searching for a solution. The settlers, the innocent souls in hypersleep. My responsibility. My damnation. Commander, we need to do something. Lieutenant Perez's voice snapped me back to reality. Her face was pale, eyes wide with fear. We can't let this spread to them. Two hundred feet. The shrieks and howls of the creatures were getting closer. One hundred and fifty feet. My hand hovered above the purge button. The final option. The last resort. If I woke the settlers, they would be defenseless. Confused. Easy prey. But if I did nothing, the infection would reach them anyway. One hundred feet. The growls and yells reached a peak. My decision had to be made, now. I slapped the button, my mind screaming in defiance even as my hand acted. The sleep pods opened, releasing the settlers. Their screams and cries filled the air, mixing with the unholy cacophony of the infected. The sounds of tearing flesh and snapping bone will haunt me forever. I took my opportunity and ran as fast as I could, leaving behind a symphony of horror. The corridors blurred as I sprinted, each step echoing my guilt, each breath a reminder of my failure. I reached the secure wing, sealing the door behind me. The screams followed, a relentless reminder of the lives I had condemned. As I caught my breath, leaning against the cold metal door, I knew there was no redemption for what I had done. The space station, once a beacon of hope, was now a tomb. And I, its cursed keeper, left to wander its haunted halls, a living witness to the horrors unleashed.
They'll never understand, I thought, the weight of my actions pressing down on me. No one will ever understand. As I moved through the dimly lit corridors of the station, every shadow seemed alive, every sound a potential death knell. The secure wing I fled to offered a momentary reprieve, but the reality was inescapable. I had damned us all. The settlers were waking up, pulled from the blissful ignorance of hypersleep into a nightmare they couldn't comprehend. Their screams were raw, primal, cries for help, for understanding, for mercy. But there was none to be found here. I could hear them, the infected, tearing into the newly awakened settlers. The sounds of tearing flesh, the crunch of bones snapping. These were the soundtrack of my guilt. I had to keep moving, had to find some way to contain this, to do something right in this sea of wrong. Navigating the station was a maze of horror. Every corner I turned presented a new scene of carnage. Bodies lay strewn across the floors, lifeless eyes staring into the abyss. Some were still moving, twitching with the last vestiges of humanity as the pathogen overtook them. The once pristine white walls were now stained with blood, the metallic tang filling the air. I stumbled upon a group of settlers, their faces pale with fear and confusion. They huddled together, clutching makeshift weapons, pipes, wrenches, anything they could find. Their eyes locked onto me, a mix of hope and desperation. Commander, one of them cried out. What's happening? What are those things? How do you tell someone that their worst nightmare is now their reality? Instead, I motioned for them to follow. We need to get to the command center, I said, my voice barely holding steady. It's our only chance. As we moved, I could see the fear in their eyes, hear the whispered prayers and curses. They had no idea that I was the one who unleashed this hell upon them. I led them through the carnage, trying to avoid the infected, but it was impossible to stay unnoticed for long. We rounded a corner and came face to face with one of the infected. It was a crew member I recognized, a man named Roberts. His eyes were glazed over, skin pallid and stretched tight over his skull. He let out a guttural snarl and lunged at us. Run! I shouted, pushing the group forward. They bolted, but Roberts was fast, too fast. He caught one of the settlers, a man named Jackson, and dragged him to the ground. Jackson's screams echoed as Roberts tore into him, blood spraying in all directions. There was nothing I could do. I had to keep moving, had to lead the others to safety. We burst into the command center, slamming the door shut behind us. I locked it, my hands shaking. The command center was a stark contrast to the chaos outside. It was quiet, too quiet. The hum of the machines and the soft glow of the monitors a cruel reminder of what we had lost. I moved to the central console, hands flying over the controls. There had to be something I could do. The girl stepped up beside me, her face pale. Commander, what now? How do we stop this? I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. We need to find a way to contain the infection. The pathogen. It's alien. Something we brought on board from that damned asteroid. There might be something in the lab reports, some clue to a solution. As I accessed the lab data, the horrifying truth unfolded. The pathogen was unlike anything we had ever encountered. An alien spore that spread rapidly, rewriting DNA and turning its hosts into mindless, ravenous beasts. The lab reports were incomplete, the researchers barely scratching the surface before they were overrun. We need to destroy the station, I said, the words heavy with finality. It's the only way to ensure this thing doesn't spread. The girl's eyes widened. Destroy the station? But what about the settlers? There has to be another way. I shook my head. There isn't. If this thing gets out, it could wipe out entire planets. We have to make sure it ends here. The others were listening. Their faces masks of despair and determination. They knew, as I did, 
that our survival was a distant hope. The priority now was containment. I began the sequence to set the station on a collision course with the nearest star. It was the only way to ensure total eradication. As I worked, the sounds of the infected pounding on the door grew louder, more frantic. Time was running out. We have to hold them off, I said, looking at the group. The final moments were a blur of chaos. The infected broke through, and we fought with everything we had. Pipes and wrenches swung, screams filled the air. Blood and sweat mingled as we struggled against the inevitable. One by one, my makeshift team fell, their sacrifices buying me the precious minutes needed to complete the sequence. As the station's thrusters engaged, I knew it was over. The infected overran the command center, but it didn't matter. The station was on its final journey, a blazing trail to oblivion. I locked eyes with the girl as she fell, a silent apology for the fate I had condemned them to. The darkness closed in, and I welcomed it. There was no redemption, no salvation. Only the cold embrace of the void, and the burning certainty that we had done what we had to. They'll never understand, I thought, as the flames of the star consumed us. No one will ever understand. And in the end, perhaps that was for the best.